Hi everybody, it's Pam with Pam Long Photography and we are down here on Main Street in Ellicott City. I have the beautiful Paula from Thank Georgia's you. Grace Cafe here. Hi everyone. She has an incredible story. She has a few things she wants to say, but she's going to um, let us know she was down here when the flood happened. Her story is incredible. Her strength is off the chart. Her attitude is phenomenal. Some days better than others, but we're here, we're here, and we're, we're working towards reopening. So really excited about that. And really excited to help everyone down here on Main Street. So, so Paula, you were down here when it started flooding. So I was down here um, when it started raining. We were open, and what happened was it was raining and raining, and people were talking about flooding, and I just started to ignore it, and I was not worried at first. And then all of a sudden, one of the tenants above me, their apartments above my space, came running down and banging on the door and said, we're flooding upstairs. upstairs. So I ran upstairs, I have metal stairs on the side of this building and I ran up the stairs and the, the water, there's a pathway there, the water was up to my knees and it was going into the apartments because there's a drain up there and I was unclogging, and it's pouring rain, right? It's pouring and I'm unclogging the drain and I'm pulling leaves and sticks and everything and she has three kids in her apartment so, so she was terrified, I was getting nervous sure. but then all of a sudden I could see the water going down the drain and I was like okay we're okay and how it's, and also at that time when she banged on the door I was getting water into my kitchen from the top from that drain not, not emptying water so it was really stressful um, once I saw that the water was going down the drain and I could see my shoes then I, I like I was relieved Yes. I ran downstairs into the cafe and Tony, my chef, said, I sent everybody home. I said, okay, 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 it's fine. And then all of a sudden, um, I looked outside and the water was raising like, so quickly. It was just so quick. And he started unplugging appliances and we, we shut the electricity off. And then he wanted to go to higher ground, like where the hot water heater was. And I said, we need to get out. We really need to get out. And as I said that, the front door just blew oh, open. Oh my it blew open. And I just said to him, I don't want to die this way. I was so terrified. And um, my stairs, if you can see my stairs here, you know, they're a good like three feet above the sidewalk. So we came out the door. The minute we stepped on the sidewalk, it was up to our necks. So you stepped out here. So we stepped out here, we stepped down here, and it was up, the water was up to our necks. Mm -hmm. And I thought, I could swim. I mean, because I swim and, you know, I, I, I know how to swim, so that was my first inclination. And I couldn't, the current, there was a current right here down at the bottom, and I couldn't move, and I was panicking. And he literally just, he's much stronger than I am, he literally just pushed me towards the stairs over here and I was hanging on to these luckily I had these planters no I was doubt. hanging on to these yeah. and I was so terrified because the current was so strong and he was pushing me ahead and as you can see it's so short but it felt like it was a half a mile to yes. get you know to get to safety and then um, we were we tried our hardest we were holding on to these balls and we got to this metal pipe from bg &E pipe They've been wonderful, by the way, but um, hanging on to that to try to get up the stairs. And I turned around and he lost footing. Oh, and he was gonna, and, and he was like, I can't, I can't hold on. And I grabbed his hand and I grabbed his wrist and I pulled him up. And, and then we climbed up the stairs. I mean, and luckily, that's how we got out. We climbed up the stairs and, and went up here, but then we had the family up here. Um, and that was just traumatic because she got locked out of her house. Kids were inside and so we oh. had to get into the building which I managed oh. to push the door open and I got in. Oh, no. How old are her children? Um, I'm not exactly sure yeah, the young. ages, but young, no. two young. One had a oh. fever of 103, oh. baby, like two years old. The other one uh, is in preschool and then the other daughter is older. She's in elementary school. So that was terrifying and finally, finally we, we got in right and we were reassuring them that everything was going to be okay but they were they experienced the last flood i was here for the last flood upstairs in an apartment painting and it was just looking at those precious faces i just didn't want them to paint they they had nightmares 
for months after that first flood. Okay. So we were just trying to calm him down and everything, and then yeah. we walked up the hill to uh, Church Street. Okay. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. We worked uh, to Church Street, and there's a castle up there yes. that Kim yes. owns, and she took us all in. Thank goodness. We were freezing. Mm. We it was it was it was bad because we didn't get out of there until like 4:45. I mean, it was long had had been happening and rising and rising. So right. I want to say I don't really I I had no concept of time, yeah. right? So yeah. I want to say 4:45 is when we started to leave, and by the time it all was over, by 5:15 down here, yeah. the water was out of control. It wow. was crazy. So you had said. When you walked out, you're like, I don't want to die this way. Yeah. When did that thought, oh, I'm okay, we're okay. When did that thought? Physically okay. Uh -huh. Physically, I, when, when I, you know, it's such a hard question because physically I thought I'd be okay. Like when we got up to the top of the stairs. Right. Like, okay. Because I know I can walk up the hill, I can go high, and I'll be okay. Yeah. Mentally, I wasn't okay when the whole thing started and water started coming into the cafe it's just I was paralyzed like I just watched it happen and I was paralyzed like I couldn't believe it was happening I started crying I started calling out to Tony like I can't I need this to stop I can't believe this is happening and he was just such a calming force such a calming force to me I couldn't have done it without him and I'm sure he'd say the same like honestly it was it was really traumatic really traumatic Unreal. So, to glad to be alive, glad to be alive. As honestly. we are yeah. glad and to I be know, alive. And I know, I know there are some people that, you know, had horrible experiences, and I just, I just empathize with them, and people who lost their lives, like Eddie, like I just, for their family, it's just yeah. so heart, heartbreaking. It is, so. it is. Um, to lighten it up a little, you shared a fun fact as far as your, the last customer out of here. Okay, so my first customer uh, when I opened my cafe was my running partner, Andy Lazarus, and I still have that $5 bill. He bought a cup of coffee, and, uh, and he was, ironically, the last customer in my cafe, and um, that was just really crazy. He was down here, and the last thing I know, I lost my phone in the flood. I had no, no idea where it was, and... Um, he got, he left here, I, I don't know what time it was because I didn't say goodbye to him. I don't even know if I knew he was here. Mm -hmm. But on my phone when I recovered it, there was a text message at 4.15, and it said, get the bleep bleep out of here. Get out, get out. And that was, you know, I just saw that text. So anyway, yeah, so that's kind of like went full circle for me. Yeah. Yeah, it was that's really, cool. really Let's walk nice. up here a minute. So I know a lot of people are asking who's coming back, who's not, and business owners, residents feel different ways when they get that question. They might not know yet. They might. Right. How do you feel when people? At first, when it happened, people? when it happened, at first I just didn't know the answer. I just d didn't know. But then, when I just saw the outpouring of love and what we've given to the community. I know what we do for the community, like we love cooking for everybody, we love when people come in, but, but the responses that I got and that the chef got and that my employees got about Georgia Grace and about how they wanted to make sure we were okay, but then they wanted to make sure they knew, that I knew how much they loved it, the experience, the food, everything. I was like, I can't let these people down. Like I have to reopen and I want to do it here because, you know, I've been here for a, a lot of my life. I've been here. <laughs> I've been here for Me, a Me, Raphael, brother-in-law. <laughs> um, and it's just, it's, this town is amazing. The people in it are amazing. The Catonsville people are amazing. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and I'm right here, like, on the line. And it's just, it's, I get to see the train. I get to see the people. I get to enjoy the community. They're so supportive. And I want to be in a small town. I don't want to be in a strip mall. And I don't want to be with a big parking lot. It's not what I ever envisioned. This is, like, a dream of mine. And I'm so excited to be here. Yes. And the, to tell you the truth, I'm terrified, right? I am. 
but if I let fear paralyze me, then, then I have nothing. Because before I opened this place, I just let everybody know, I had never done this before in my life, but I knew I wanted to open my own cafe restaurant. I knew it. And those who know me know that that's a dream of mine. And it took me a long time to do it. And I could say it was because of contractors and I can say it was because of the other flood, but really it was because I was terrified to do it. I was so afraid to do it because I had never done it before and I was so insecure about it. And finally, I just moved forward. You know, I, I had people, I had um, my chef, I had these people who I just hired and they're just like, you can do it, you can do it. And, and so I did it and everybody just accepted me with such warmth and open arms and so now this which we have no control over right. not gonna stop me right, right. not gonna stop me right. and and I live in a neighborhood I live in Dunlogan it's on higher ground and you know it, it made me it, it's an awful thing because whatever's going on with the rain and, and the problems here and the overdevelopment or what have you um, it wasn't just here mm -hmm. okay mm -hmm. when I went back home and I went for a run I'm a big runner went running through the neighborhood backyards were flooded front yards were flooded main breaks were happening everywhere on the streets ilchester road is devastated no matter where i went there were problems it wasn't just right here right catonsville had problems so i can only pray that this is not going to happen for a long time i mean things are going to happen mother nature is going to do her thing i can't i can't let glad. it stop me we're glad I completely respect the people who choose not to stay. Absolutely. And I completely respect the people who do stay. Right. Um, you would mentioned opening up and having that fear. What is your background? You, people would come in here and think restaurant is your background. Well, my dad owned a restaurant in Georgetown for a very long time. Mm -hmm. um, but I was really little and I was never allowed to work, work there. But like food is a huge part of our culture, the Greek culture. Everybody knows that who's Greek. Every every all the families we cook we cook for millions of people we force feed people when they come in right we're just cooking all the time so I love to cook and uh, but I you know was in marketing and advertising for 25 years so um, that's what's what I did every day but I also cooked a lot and I and I catered for some parties and some Christmas parties and I did things like that and everybody raved about my food and they wanted me to bring things to places and finally I just said I have to do this I, I want to do something that I love every day yeah. and driving here every morning and getting to see the same people in the morning get their coffee or and even newcomers it just made me so it just made me so happy I didn't want to be anywhere else I didn't want to be anywhere else but here at the cafe because of the people yes and what I could give them it's just amazing oh so it's yeah. delicious yeah and I want to know here here's the most important question where do I go to have Tony's cure in the meantime the cure sandwich I don't know. <laughs> such a creature of habit I don't know well we could make it for you in my kitchen at home <laughs> there you go <laughs> so quick story I when we were talking about doing this today texting last night she says, uh, call me in the morning at 9. I'm running. I'm like, oh, is this going to be your first run since the flood? <laughs> since the flood? She's like, hell no. <laughs> so I'm so happy to hear. The day after the flood, it's I ran. And, and so I therapeutic, I'm yeah. sure. I didn't know if I could do it, actually. I said to yeah. my running partner, I'm like, I don't know if I can do this. And I did it. And then I had the epiphany of with the water and it was, Chester and everywhere. It, yeah, I got yeah. to see all these places. But it was just, all, all I know is it just... Everybody who was involved in this flood, again, it connects you in a way that you can't explain. And we all find strength in each other. If it wasn't for my chef, I'm not sure I'd be alive, but we, we've become closer in that and, and just, you know, we're getting through this. It's tough, it's tough for everybody. And when I see people who, whatever decision they make, and I totally respect it, I get it, I'm, I totally understand it. It's just, we're all, a family we're all here to help one another and and that's so wonderful mm -hmm. because of it so if, if, the, if you're looking for a bright side to any of this it does make people come together in a way that you know we're all we're all too busy we're all too busy here in the United States to like look up every once in a while it's true so that's one thing it's true all right so there's so many people wanting to help in one way or the other what 
would you suggest to people? Some people said I'm out of town. What's the best way to help? Well, everybody down here needs help. Everybody needs help. You can volunteer. You can come and volunteer your time because there's so much cleanup that needs to be done in every storefront. And to do that, you need to go to St. Peter's Church, um, which is on the corner of Main and Rogers Avenue, mm -hmm. and get a wristband. But you can't do that without a business owner or property owner there with you to, um, to make that happen. You can probably donate supplies to the church. I'm sure they're, they're, they're in need of supplies, cleaning supplies, anything like that. Uh, multiple um, stores here have GoFundMe pages. I have one also. Look on Facebook for those, I believe, and you can donate money because um, people are trying to rebuild, whether they are rebuilding here or anywhere. Um, everything is gone. I Yesterday or the day before, I cried. I just cry. I, I'm trying to be strong, mm -hmm. but I just broke down and cried as every piece of my kitchen had to be thrown away, which was, wasn't even a year old. It's gone. And um, that was really, really tough because, and, and, and this is everybody's story, when you're building a place, no matter what the business is, it's just not equipment that you're buying. Everything that you touch that's in there, everything we used, to create whatever we did for the community was with so much love mm -hmm. and there are memories behind every single thing in this cafe as well as everybody's business. I went to the store the other day, yesterday, um, and I'm standing, I'm buying a bottle of wine and behind that bottle of wine was the sherry which I used to marinate the salmon oh. and I just started crying. Oh. Just because it's, it's the last time I'll I'll be buying that for a long time, and it, it, that was really that was really really hard for me. So any anything like that, they can they can just donate their time, they can donate money, they can donate supplies, they can just just words of support. Yes. I love everybody who's commented on my page or just with emojis and the thumbs up, anything like that. It really it makes us so much stronger. It it's wonderful. It does. Absolutely. And speaking of that, if you don't already like her Facebook page, it's Georgia Grace Cafe. Correct. Right? Please like it. And like she said, it's so important to everybody, whether they live down here or work down here, to have those words of, words of encouragement. Don't stop that. Please. Keep that going because that does keep us going when we look around like, and you feel like you're just out of steam. We read the words. I was telling someone the other day, I want to copy and paste from the texts and the messages and the emails yeah. and put it in a book so when we're feeling down and out, I know, go right? through the book and be reminded. I, that, I that. read my Facebook page every day because the comments from people are, are, are the only thing that really keep me going. Yeah. It's amazing and yeah. I love you all and I appreciate each and every one of you, new customers, old customers, friends, strangers, anybody who's reaching out. It's just, it's so wonderful and I thank you from the bottom of my heart. Mm. You're wonderful. Thank Isn't you. she great? Yeah. All right. Thank you. Go like her business page. Keep supporting everybody. Um, one other way to help is the helpelegantcity.com. Things.com or .net. I'll change the status and I'll put these links in that, that she was referring to. Um, and that's another way um, to donate as well. Thank you so much for tuning in. Please keep everybody in your thoughts. Thank you. Help out where you can. Um, Thank you. We love you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you.